Hello, everyone. Happy Friday to all of you. Every time that I hear that and it ends, I feel like saying let's play ball for some reason. But uh, good to see everyone here today. Happy Friday. I hope you all had a good week. And let's see. I see that all of our awesome mods are here. So, ladies, hello. I hope you had a good week as well. And thank you very much for joining in. Let's see. In the lineup for our mods, we have JT, who is our OG. All right. We have Yarn Prepper. We have Jan. And we have Copernicus, also known as Miss Worm. So good to see you all, ladies. Thank you very much for being here. Let's see. We have Gracious48 in the house. How you doing? Good to see you, Becky. Next exit. New Florida Prepper 1. How are you doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, que... <laughs> oh, my God. KN Boxer. <laughs> I think is what you're trying to say. James McNally, how you doing? All the way from Florida. Good to see you. Uh, surviving Behind Liberal Lines is in the house. Hello, Lisa Foster. I read something here. I don't know who put it, but read something where they said, did you read about, read about the lady that went on a cruise and left her kids home alone? I'm like, are you serious? Like, how old were these kids? If you can put that down there. Amazing. Sometimes it just ceases to amaze you anymore, right, ladies and gentlemen? You're like, yeah. That's pretty normal, right? Comparatively speaking to all of the other things that you hear about. Uh, Linda Bob, McBean Scottish Fitness. How you doing, John? Good to see you, my friend. Reliable Prepper in the house. Good to see you. Uh, SR is in the house. Live the Republic or Long Live the Republic. Amen to that. Has anyone seen the movie? I think it comes out today. Oh, I think it came out today. Has anyone here seen that movie, Civil War? The one that we've been hearing a lot about here uh, for the last couple of months or so. Evita is in the house. How you doing, Evita? JR, just in case I don't see you down there. Hello to you as well, my friend. Good to see you. F. Pierre, how are you? Surviving Behind Liberal Lines gifted 10 memberships. Thank you very much, man. Thank you very much, Surviving Behind Liberal Lines. That's awesome. I truly do appreciate the support. And today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about power generation. It does not only have to be solar generators. It can be anything. I actually have a small windmill, a 400-watt windmill, that I hope to be able to get to amongst my other projects this summer so that we can make some power during the winter uh, when it's a little bit windier, but more importantly, when there's almost no sun. If you have a solar generator, and a regular combustion engine generator. Uh, take a look at the video I put up, I don't know, about a week ago or so, where I did a test with my, excuse me, with my Opus Mega 5 and extra battery to see how long it would run the essentials in my home and then how much gasoline it took to recharge the entire unit uh, in case that in, in the wintertime we lose power for a long time, we don't have any sun to recharge it. So that's something that you may want to know because I came to the conclusion that, and I actually talked to my wife about this, I think it was this morning or yesterday morning. I come to the conclusion that if we have a long-term power outage in the winter time here, when we barely have any sun that's even usable for solar, we can get by on running our entire household, every single thing that we need for about 24 gallons of gasoline a month, ladies and gentlemen, that's a month. In my opinion, that is a very good number, and it's actually not even that expensive. And almost anyone that you know can put away five five-gallon cans of gasoline for emergencies, depending on where you live, of course. So today, I want to concentrate on talking about power generation in whatever form you would like. However, the floor is open to any kinds of questions or any comments that you want to share with our community. Keep it family friendly. And if you do want to share something, either in the form of a comment or a question, put it all in caps so that hopefully I can catch it. And let me tell you that if you are all looking for a solar generator, I just got a hold of Opus or they got a hold of me. And they're going to start another really big sale starting next week. So hold off on getting anything if you're in the market for that until next week. I think it's next Monday. I'll put out a short video to let you all know what's going on with them because they're going to have another big sale. And having said that, let's go ahead and say hello to Sue Ladine. How are you doing? Butterfly31, how are you? Okay, Lisa Foster says the kids are, wow, that's incredible. They're eight, 
and three. I almost thought you said 31, but it says three, I believe. The mom got arrested at 6 p.m. tonight. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, JR, how about you? <laughs> JR says, I'm free. <laughs> uh, how you doing, brother? Good to see you, man. <laughs> oh, Seth. Oh, Nostradamus says that uh, Pinball said that the movie was awful. Okay, great. I tend to really like bad movies. Has anyone here ever seen the movie series Sharknado? Let me know if you have. Just put a big yes uh, on the comments. Sharknado is one of the corniest movie series in the world, but I can watch that over and over again. My son introduced me to that series a long time ago. Uh, Vini Queen Sola, how are you? Uh, Magugu, how are you? Or Magogo? Now, someone sent me an email here a little bit ago, and they asked me if I could talk to them or, or let them know my opinion in the form of reviewing a certain solar generator system that they were considering purchasing. Now, I am very, very limited to what solar generator systems I can review. Opus has worked with me very well as far as them being able to get the product that they want me to review here to Alaska. But almost no solar generator system will deliver to Alaska, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, I pretty much cannot review anything on a whim, even if I were going to buy it myself. Okay. Usually whenever I get an email from a company saying, hey, can you review this? I'll be like, yes, but can you deliver to this city and the zip code? And 90% plus of the times they come back and say, well, no, we can't deliver there. Sorry for wasting your time. And the only ones that take the time and make the effort and expense to deliver to me is Opus, right? I'm so very happy that they have a product that I can stand behind, meaning that it's a great product <laughs> because they're pretty much the only ones that can deliver to me or that take the time and expense to deliver to me because you can deliver up here as far as solar generators go, but it costs an awful lot of money. So they can't even deliver up here anymore for customers that buy an Opus because it just costs so much that they would make negative uh, profit. They would make a negative profit if they were to deliver up here, even by charging a $50 fee that they used to in the past. So uh, so anyways, I'm going to be bringing that up sometime on Monday and, uh, and, and see what kind of deals they got going on. Uh, this is the kind of economy, I would say, that we've entered into where when you are spending some of your hard earned bucks on things that you don't need to live like food, water, transportation, so you can get back and forth to work so that you can buy food, water, medicine, you know, shelter, stuff like that, that you have to be very picky about what you get and when you get it. So I think that we're going to enter, if not, we've already entered the on sale economy, the I'm only going to buy it if it's on sale at a really good price. And I think they've they've uh, noticed that. I think a lot of businesses have noticed that going forward. Uh, 20 on Pump 5, how you doing? Good to see you. Oh, are you serious? Amazing grandma, that is terrible. This lady that went on a cruise and left her kids at home. Oh, my goodness. Uh, yes, McBean, you are able to actually claim a tax deduction on a solar generator. Uh, as long as you use it in your home, you're able to claim, I think it's up to 30% or something like that. So, yeah, I, I didn't know that you could do that with solar generators until I was scrolling through uh, Opus's website here a little bit ago. Every once in a while when I'm bored, I just go on a website of one of my affiliates and I, I just check it out. And every once in a while, I'll find a little mistake here or there. Like, hey, you put this on this page and it shouldn't be there. It should be over here or whatever. And uh, and I let him know about it. And not just Opus, but, you know, Nutrient Survival as well, let's say. Uh, FMX 101, how you doing? Uh, yeah, it's pretty difficult for people to get notices nowadays, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. How you doing, Bill Fegger? Good to see you. Patricia Angermeyer, good to see you. Oh, man, you know, this is going to make me want to watch it even more. <laughs> uh, people say that it's like a, a, a movie that's not worth watching kind of makes me want to watch it even more. 
Okay. Uh, Stormy Kurtz, how you doing all the way from the Evergreen State of Washington? Good to see you. Uh, James McNally, how are you doing? Good to see you. You, you know what? Let me go ahead and... Uh, I, I had a little bit of chill earlier on, but uh, it's gone now, and I'm starting to get warm. So this here is that jacket that I bought. If you all saw the video that I did when I went to Anchorage, and I went to the Cabela's down there. That's the jacket that I bought. And that thing is very nice and warm. In, in all weathers, by the way. Today is Yarn Prepper's birthday. Well, Yarn Prepper, happy birthday. I didn't know that. Happy birthday to Yarn Prepper, one of our moderators. And today is a good day, isn't it, Yarn? And may the good Lord bless you with many more. That's awesome. Happy birthday. 103 Catherine, hello. Yes, absolutely. Welcome to anyone who is new to the channel. If you are new, stay through the entire uh, broadcast or live stream. And uh, towards the end, we'd like to shout out uh, those of you that are new to the community. Let's see. Let's bring it on down some. And look at this. The troublemaker is here. Ladies. I mean, my moderators, all right? Ladies, please keep an eye on Mr. Tom because you all know what a troublemaker he is. Hey, Mr. Tom, did you see the video that I put out this morning? I was showcasing your favorite or what I think is your favorite mayonnaise and how expensive it's gotten up here at the commissary where I went ahead and showed off the difference between shrinkflation and just pure inflation with your Duke's mayonnaise. Incredible how prices have gone up. Did you all see the video I put out this morning as far as the price of the olive oil at Costco? Incredible. We we went to Costco, I think it was this last weekend. Uh, not this, you know, like this, this last weekend, so almost a week ago. We went to Costco, and my wife spotted, and I was like, are you kidding me? Oh, my. I wouldn't put it past them to hit that oil at $100 a year pretty soon. With as fast as been as it's been going up in price, incredible. And I think this is a great prep to have. Patricia says that she bought a bicycle or a tricycle uh, that has a basket for when hard times arrive. I would love to have one of those trikes, but electric. It would be an awesome uh, machine to gather water from you know like a mile away or a half mile away if you're in one of those predicaments where you have a water source but you have to travel to it it'd be nice i have an electric bicycle that i reviewed here a while back and it's very nice electric bike and uh that's what i would do with that if i had to haul stuff i would use that as like my mule uh, for those of you that don't know this during the vietnam war one of the vehicles that was used the most for transporting goods uh, through the Ho Chi Minh Trail was bicycles. Uh, they found out that if you centered the weight on the bikes good enough, that you can put upwards of about a 1,000 pounds on a bicycle and bring it through the jungle. And that was one of the ways that they used in order to move their ammunition, their equipment, et cetera, et cetera, through the Ho Chi Minh Trail. So if they can fight a war with bicycles that are not electric bikes, we can definitely use one as our mule during hard times to get stuff, especially us oldies and fat bodies that can't really go up and down hills very easily. Let's see. SC Quilter, how are you doing? Natasha Newsom, how are you doing? Good to see you. Gina Brown, hello. War is here. War, I love these questions. Thoughts on the medals. Last night, let me tell you what, last night I was glued to my phone because, and I actually took a picture of when gold passed $2,400 an ounce for the first time ever. I took a picture with a timestamp on the upper left-hand corner, and I, I, I called my daughter over and I said, hey, little Miss Alaska Prepper, check this out. And she's like, what? I'm like, I want you to see this right now. And I said, I wanted you to be able to say one day that you saw the day that gold went over the $2,400 threshold. But ladies and gentlemen, there's something that I've realized that goes on here with the metals markets more lately than in the past. And you know what? I actually have it open. 
I'm going to go ahead and share this with you because there's really nothing that's scripted today. So let me go ahead and share this screen with you, if you don't mind. And we'll take a look at this. And uh, here it is. This is actually the chart of silver. Let me see if uh, you can see it okay. All right. Let me see how it's looking on your side. Okay, I think you can see that pretty well. So this here is the chart of silver. And I want to bring this down to the hour. You see, let's bring this down to the one hour mark. Okay. And what that means, if you're bringing it to the one hour mark, it means that if you take a look at every one of these little poles, they're called candles. Every one of these is the equivalent of one hour in time. So, for example, this one right here is a candle for the 11th of April of uh, 11 p.m. This is 11 p.m. on the 11th of April. Okay. And today's the 12th. So, this, so this was last night. And then this is midnight. All right, or or 12 in the morning on the 12th of April. This is one in the morning, two in the morning, three, etc. So these candles are on the hour uh, where I had it before, right here. And I'm sorry for those of you that understand how to read these charts, but you know, I like to explain it so that everyone can get something out of it. All right. And this is where I normally have it. This is the daily, meaning that each one of these candles is one day in time. But I was noticing, looking at the one-hour chart, that almost every single day around 6 or 7 in the morning, I think I narrowed it to 7 in the morning. Let's see. Uh, let me see. That's 4 in the morning, 5, 6. Okay. Eight, it's 8 in the morning. Between 7 and 8 in the morning, every day, the market goes down. Like, look at today. This was at 7 in the morning. At 7 in the morning, the market... Uh, reached this top pretty much. And you can see that with silver, it hit almost $30 an ounce. But then at seven in the morning, boom, it dives. And why is that? Uh, and that's seven in the morning, my time. Okay, here, my time. The reason I think that is, is because our markets in the West are not open yet. And we cannot manipulate it with ETFs, with paper silver or paper gold. Because if you take a look at this, I'm going to take a look at this right here. And look, I, I don't even have to look. I already know this is 7 in the morning. This is the 10th of April, 7 a.m., okay? And look at what happens at 8 a.m. As soon as our market's over here, in my opinion, open, boom, it goes straight down. Let's take a look at this. What time is this? Well, this is pretty close. This is April 9th at 6 in the morning. And at 7 in the morning, it started to go down. Look at all the way down. In a couple of hours, it already went down, you know, a pretty good amount for silver. So I've noticed that that happens almost every day. So yesterday, let's take a look at our goal real quick. <laughs> this is incredible. It's actually a blessing in a way. So yesterday, when I'm seeing gold just go up and up and up, I mean, look at where it started right here. This was yesterday at about five o'clock in the morning, okay? And it was at $2,337 roughly, okay? Let's say $2,330, right? By the end of the day or by the end of that market day, it was all the way up to $2,426, almost $100, all right? And then what happens at eight in the morning? Bam. It just starts going down and down and down and down, right? But then here, and then here, when you get down here, I see that we have a double bottom. And a double bottom is bullish. It means it's going to go up. So I'm thinking that if it does go up any, it's going to go up a little bit again. And then tomorrow it'll get slammed back down, just like it happens all the time. But eventually, ladies and gentlemen, they will not be able to manipulate this anymore. Uh, because there is currently an arbitrage happening. And an arbitrage, for those of you that don't know what that means, is that there is a difference between the East and the West in how we price metals. And in the West, in the East, excuse me, like China, India, their metals are being priced in U.S. dollar terms a lot higher than what they are being priced here. That's one of the reasons why I think that when our markets here are closed, the prices are going up. And then when our markets open, they get slammed right down because the powers that be cannot allow gold and silver to trade freely. If they do so, it will be kryptonite to what is 
the Federal Reserve note, i.e. the U.S. dollar. They can't allow that. But eventually, they won't be able to manipulate it anymore. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've often said that anything that's manipulated can be manipulated and will be continue to be manipulated until it can no longer be manipulated. And there will come a time where they can no longer hold that in. Right now, but anyways, let me go ahead and show you what I'm looking at here with gold real quick. For those of you that maybe haven't seen this, I will show you real quick. I don't want to bore those of you that know about that, you know, are pretty are pretty good at this, right? So anyways, this is our one hour. Let me change this to the daily real quick. Let's do this to the daily real quick. All right, there we go. All right, there's the daily. And I, and I already know, ladies and gentlemen, I know you can't eat gold. You can eat it, but you're not going to get calories out of it. Uh, all that kind of stuff. Get get. I'm not telling you to buy gold or silver. Uh, make sure that you have food first. I'd rather have preps first before gold. If my pantry is not full of things that I need in order to eat and feed my family for a whole six months to a year at least, I'm not buying any gold and silver. This is what I call excess wealth. If you have excess wealth, meaning you have everything that you need, right, in order to be able to sustain your standard of living should systems go down for a long time, then any excess wealth that you have, because uh, because you can't fit the entire world into your house, right? You can't fit everything you're going to use for the next lifetime in your house. So with that excess wealth, you purchase something or trade that fiat currency for something that you know will retain its value and purchasing power long term. That's why I like gold and silver. I believe it is God's money. He put it on the earth so that we can have something to trade with that is honest and fair. And it's not it's not manipulated by man. And let me go ahead and cover the one where people say, well, in the Bible, it says that one day you will be throwing your gold and silver onto the street. I believe that they they will be throwing their gold and silver onto the street refers to man, to man who took God's money, gold and silver and manipulated it into a fiat currency that they now control. So to the evildoers, right, to these people that love nothing but money, right, the ones that create money out of thin air so that they can enrich in themselves, that is their gold and silver. To them, fiat currency is their gold and silver. Because the more that they manipulate it, the more that they uh, print out of thin air, the richer they get and the poorer that we the people get. And that's not what God intended. He intended a system of fair trade. So yes, one day they, the money changers, will be throwing their gold and silver, their fiat currency onto the streets. And anyone who holds on to that, because a Ponzi scheme can only last so long. Anyways, what you're looking at here is what's called a uh, a, a uh, bullish flag. All right, this is like a flagpole right here. And then this right here is like the flag. And then once that flag breaks out above this uh, threshold right here, uh, you can see that it goes up roughly, okay, roughly. In this case, a little, oh, no, yeah, it's roughly, not more, right here. Here's the bottom. So it goes up roughly what the pole went up, right? So now... Once we have sideways action, I think we'll have some sideways action up and down, up and down, somewheres in this area. Once it breaks out from there, it's going to go back up, same way it did before. And it's going to keep breaking out until we hit this real big pole right here. It hits around 2,900 or so. And then I think that once it hits that 2,900 or so, I believe that that's going to be the beginning, the actual beginning of a huge decadal long or years-long bull market in gold and silver. So anyways, that's what it looks like. You can see right here where we hit yesterday, we hit uh, 2400 and about $33, $34, something like that. Pretty amazing. It's, uh, also, it's also pretty amazing how much control they have over this system just by using paper. Uh, let me see. I'm going to bring this down because... You know, I took my time doing that, and I probably missed a lot of questions. So if I did miss a question here or there, ladies and gentlemen, just ask it again. That way I can catch it. Uh, let's see. Zelda Me asks, isn't silver going to be easier to barter with? Isn't silver going to be easier to barter with than silver? I think you meant than gold. Yes, it is. Silver, in my opinion, is the money that's 
that's to be used to spend on a daily basis. And gold is the money that you use to put away your wealth for long term. But uh, but even in Venezuela, they were using gold flakes and shaving off little pieces of gold off of coins and and off of jewelry in order to trade for food and services. So you can use it. Gold and silver are monetary metals. Gold more so than silver because silver is used in uh, in industry. But they are both monetary metals, meaning that it doesn't matter what shape or form it has. The metal within that sliver of silver or gold or coin or whatever it is, that's gold or silver is going to be worth the same thing that the metal in a pure ounce of gold is worth or silver is worth just at that amount. If it's a gram or a half a gram, it's a monetary metal. Yes, yes, Mr. Tom. And, and I would go one further. He who has food and shelter, but more importantly, shelter that's paid off that you don't owe any money on will be best off during any kind of a great depression. But remember, Mr. Tom, and I and I know that you remember this because you, you were you, you were what about 45 years old when the Great Depression started. Remember that one way that a lot of people lost their homes and land was because they had no money to pay the taxes. So yes, I would say even put some gold and silver away. I'm not a financial advisor. I have to say that because I'm on the internet. Put away some gold and silver in order so that you can pay your property taxes. Because I don't think things can ever get bad enough in order for a government to stop collecting taxes in one way or another. It's just a way of securing what you have. But absolutely, I mean, we've all seen those... Uh, We've all seen those documentaries from like the Great Depression. A lot of people saying we didn't even know. You know, we were kids back then and we didn't. And Mr. Tom, I was just kidding that you were 45 when the Great Depression started. <laughs> By the way, ladies and gentlemen, in about another six days or so, it's going to be Mr. Tom's birthday. Hey, Mr. Tom, what's it going to be? Your 67th or 68th birthday? Let us know which one it is. Uh, but as I was saying, if you see some of those documentaries during the Great Depression, you'll see kids saying we didn't even know that we were poor, or we didn't even know that there was a depression going on. All we knew is that we didn't have no money, but we had food, we had clothes, even though our mothers uh, mended them or made them for us. We were lucky if we got a pair of shoes every once in a while, but we were always fed because back then, almost everyone grew a garden. And back then, I believe it was like 80 or 90% of the population were farmers. Incredible. Uh, Annie G says, how high did you see? I see silver going to about $70. But remember, when I say I see gold going to like $2,900, that's, that's when it's going to start. <laughs> Uh, this may be hard for people to understand. I would have to actually take out the entire shard and, and go all the way back about 15 years and show you the cup and handle formation that's been forming through that time. Silver has a cup and handle formation that's about 40 something years old. I think the cup formation is like 30 years old and the handle is about 11 years old. Silver is going to go up in nominal value so incredibly high that people are not going to believe it and that there's going there's going to be some kind of an issue going on there's going to be something going on ladies and gentlemen that's going to make silver go up so high that even if i told you right now what i think it's going to go up to you won't believe me you will not believe me but silver is going to way outperform gold in my opinion it's going to outperform gold like crazy so when i tell you that i see silver going up to like 70 and I see gold going up to like 2,900. First of all, do your own research. And I'm not saying that this is going to happen in the next week or two weeks. That's not what I'm saying, right? And I'm not only talking silver and gold because of the price action that we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Those of you that have been here for a while know that I love talking about silver and gold. And I've been talking about it for years now. But that price action, 2,900 for gold, about $70 or so for silver, that's the beginning. That will mark the beginning of the next decade long, 10 year long, if not more, bull market in gold and silver. 
Will there be times during that 10 year of upward trend where gold or silver has their down days? Absolutely. But the trend will be up and it will be a very long upward trend. Why? Because this fiat system, as we know it, is on its last leg. And more importantly, the people of the world are starting to catch on that gold and silver is real money because all they have to do is look for themselves what's happened with gold and silver against the fiat currency of their choice, be it the dollar or be it the pound or be it the yen or the yuan or the bolivar or the peso, whatever it may be. Take a look at the relationship or the correlation be between fiat currency and gold, especially for the last several decades. And you know that gold will always do its job in protecting your purchasing power, always. And people can see what's happening in other countries like Egypt, Turkey, where, where they're having massive inflation. And they see that the price of gold over there is keeping up with their inflation, if not outperforming it. So. Those people that for so long have always mocked those that say, hey, listen, gold and silver may not be very, you know, fancy, you know, in terms of having something that you can say, hey, this is an investment. It's never been an investment for me. And I don't believe that it is an investment because all it is, is just money. It's just real money. It's what they want us to think the dollar is, but it's not. All right. So these things have been suppressed for so long. I guess the best way that I can describe it. Let's say that this is a let's say that this is a beach ball, right? I know there's some there's some quarters in there, but let's say that this is a beach ball and 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 this is gold and silver. And then we have this beach ball in an ocean, right? Right now, gold and silver are in a bubble. They are in a bubble, but they are in an inverse bubble, right? The stock market and the housing market in my opinion are in a bubble. They are in an upward bubble where the price is way higher than what it should be. Gold and silver are in an inverse bubble where the price is way lower than it should be. So imagine that this is the ocean, the top of the ocean, and, and, we, and this is a beach ball that represents gold and silver. And you just push it down and keep pushing it down. And you keep pushing it down by manipulating the price with paper, right? That has zero backing of physical gold and silver. And you keep pushing that beach ball down that represents gold and silver. Once there is no more that you can push down on that, once you lose the power to manipulate that beach ball, that gold and silver, it's going to shoot up through the water and into the air higher than most people can see. That's what is an inverse bubble. And that's what gold and silver is in. Think about all of the fiat currency that's traveling out there in the world, right? In the internet. Uh, an actual physical cash. Think about all that fiat currency, ladies and gentlemen, that is it's not backed by anything. It's only backed by the fact that people think it's money when it's really not. All right, let's see. Mrs. Blessed is in the house. How are you doing? Margarita Castaneda, how are you doing? It's good to see you. Oh, and by the way, I was talking about how Opus is going to have a sale next week, and I'll talk about it probably during Monday's video, if not Sunday's video, but uh, there's going to be giveaways. I'm going to give away three really nice gifts that Opus uh, is going to allow me to give away and then ship directly to you. So make sure that you catch my videos, ladies and gentlemen, because there's going to be th three people are going to be very happy, or maybe I'll make it two. Maybe I'll make it a combo for one giveaway and then another giveaway for something else, right? They're giving away some solar generator and some solar panels. So, so yeah, I mean, you never know. It may be you, right? And it's not going to cost anything uh, for anyone to be able to enter. It'll just be a simple entry. Uh, who's your pioneer? How are you doing? Becky Williams, hello, Sabrina. Rakamas is in the house. How are you, Rakamas? Good to see you. Uh, okay, let's see. Rhonda says, question, buy from Scottsdale Mint or SD Bullion? Thanks. 
I think they're both just as good. I have an SD bullion link uh, on the description of my videos, as well as ITM Trading and as well as Genesis Gold Group. If you're just going to buy a few ounces of silver or an ounce of gold or a tenth of an ounce, I would just go to SD bullion. If you're going to try to transfer a lot of the money that you have, let's say you're a millionaire and you have $100,000 that you want to use to buy gold or silver, I would say go to ITM Trading. Plus, ITM Trading actually teaches you about stuff and uh, you can talk to them as long as you want, as many times as you want, and never purchase anything. And they're going to keep telling you what it is that you need to know as far as answering your questions. So I like ITM trading because of that. Uh, but uh, Genesis Gold Group is more for like IRAs if you want to if you want to exchange your IRA for gold and silver. But if you just want to buy a few ounces of silver, SD Bullion is, is where I would go if you're going to buy a few ounces online. I believe that SD Bullion has started to do IRAs as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, why do I have so many different uh, precious metals uh, affiliates that I affiliate with or partner with? Because they're not all affiliates. Only one of them is SD Bullion. I partner with ITM Trading and with Genesis Gold Group because I like competition. Competition is very important in everything. Why? Because it gives you, the consumer, the best price and the best product. Imagine if there was only one solar generator company in the world, and that's all it was. How would you know that they were charging you a fair price, right? Unless you made your own and you can compare it and stuff like that. But you really wouldn't. Uh, but look at how convenient it is when you have a lot of competition, all of these companies making solar generators. And look at how the price of solar generators over the years has actually come down. Heck, I remember that when I got the 2400 from Opus, I think that was selling for like 1600 bucks or something like that, like two years ago. Now, during the sale that's coming up, I think you'll be able to pick one up for less than $799, for like $760. Bucks. It's half the price or less than half the price of what it used to be when it first came out. That's because of competition. So I like competition. I think it's good for the consumer because the companies compete with each other for your business. So that's why I have multiple uh, dealers of the same items uh, in some instances. Let's see. Okay. Let me see. Kate Deshong, how are you doing? All the way from Indiana. Well, welcome. Welcome to the live. Glad that you made it. Uh, SJ Buck asks, this is an interesting question. So are there mutual funds where you can get gold and silver to invest in? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know. That's a good question, but I don't think so because a mutual fund by nature is a fund that has a whole bunch of different companies within it that kind of like uh, diversify against each other, meaning that if one company doesn't do very good, more than likely this other company within the same fund will do good enough to offset what this company lost. Uh, so that's what a, uh, what a mutual fund is pretty much about. So is that you can have competing, not competing funds, but a diversity of stocks and shares of stocks within that fund that would offset each other in case one of them lost, one of them gained, etc. So I don't see why there would be like mutual funds. Uh, the IRA is the only thing that I know of that you can actually transfer from an IRA account to a gold or silver and silver IRA. Uh, so, so I would say no. But that's just me thinking out loud because, you know, obviously I don't do this for a living. I'm not a CPA or anything like that or a financial advisor. Uh, let's see. Yarn Prepper asked, do you think silver will ever go back down to $25? Last I bought $24, I am, I am priced out right now. You are not priced out, Yarn Prepper. Go buy yourself a silver dime or a silver quarter, right? Um, so you're not priced out. Because um, uh, yesterday, I think it was yesterday, I went to the coin shop to hang out. Uh, I got a little bit of silver, some junk silver. I think silver was $31 an ounce with, with premium yesterday. That's just junk. And here's a, here's a uh, let me go ahead and uh, where is it? Uh, is this one right here? No. I'll just make believe make believe that this is a silver eagle. You all know how silver eagles have high premiums, right? 
When you go to your coin shop, ask them for their junk silver eagles, meaning ones that have scratches on them, you know, that aren't just pretty to look at, that maybe are a little bit, uh, you know, dirty or something like that. You can wash them. Because when I went into the store here the other day, I was able to buy a few silver eagles that were the same price as bullion. And they're still silver eagles. They're just mixed dates. They may have a scratch on them or something, but they're still triple nine pure eagle i mean pure silver and they are sovereign coins so check those out i think it's a great deal if you can get those on the cheap that way but yeah you can still buy silver yarn prepper you don't have to buy an ounce or two go buy a dime or two or if you're passing by a coin shop go get yourself a dime or two dimes or a quarter or two quarters it doesn't have to be an ounce it doesn't have to be 20 ounces uh, you're not going to be priced out and do i think it's going to go down to 25 dollars again anything can happen I honestly wish that it would. I wish that silver would go down to $20. Uh, but I think that what will happen is, is that the premium will skyrocket and you're not really going to save much money. All right. I think that dollar cost averaging and procuring your gold and silver or precious metals is the way to go. So the first week or so of the month, uh, I try, my wife and I try to go down to the coin shop and get a little bit of silver. Sometimes we can get more. Then other months, some months we can't get that much. I think this last month we got a few silver eagles that were on the cheap, and we got a roll of uh, quarters uh, of 90%, uh, which was a great deal, by the way, on both the silver eagles and the quarters. Uh, let's see. Ann Palmer, how are you doing? From the great state of Louisiana, that is. My grandpa grew up in the Great Depression and said, or my grandma, and said she did not even know that it was a Great Depression. Yep. I've heard that a lot. Let's see. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, people keep asking, will silver go back down? I personally, I just don't think it's going to go back down like below 26. Because 26 and 27 even was that point that we were waiting it to close. And today it closed above 27 for the week. So it closed above 27 for the week. That is a very big deal right within technical analysis uh so i think that is i don't think that is going to go back down very much lower than what it is let me see how much lower can i go back let me take a look at it real quick so is this uh this is gold right here let me change this real quick all right so that's gold here's silver okay so silver yeah yeah right here somewhere I mean, it might get back down to the 25s or something like that. But I can tell you right now that the very lowest that it would go back down, if it does get back down below like $25 or $26 really is what I would say, is this 200-day moving average right here of $23.50. But again, I think that if that does happen, if it comes back down to test this $23.50, which I don't think it will, but if it does, it would be a blessing in disguise. Uh, I think that the premiums would probably go up a little bit more than what they are now. But, uh, yeah, I think that this right here is going to it's going to stay. I think that the 200 is going to be a floor for now. But I think that the floors are going to continue to go up. As you see these flags, these bull flags being executed, I think that the floors are going to continue to go up. And, again, like I said, once it gets up here, this is where I think it's going to end off around 60. Here we go, 70 bucks. Once it gets to about $70 right around here, I think that's going to be the beginning of the new decades long, if not longer, bull market. And uh, that's just me thinking out loud, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I am a big fan of dollar cost averaging. All right. Because I don't really, I don't really worry about, well, where is it at today? Is it a little bit up? It's a little bit down. I should go get it today because I think it's going to go up. I just dollar cost average. I get whatever I can get, whatever I have budgeted in nominal amount every month, the beginning of the month, I go get what I can get with it. And that's it. And I don't look back. Let's see. Bob from accounting said, <laughs> Bob from accounting, silver will have a little retrace and then another run up. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. This is going to be the time that all of these silver and gold bugs have been waiting for, right? And all of the people with weak hands, they are going to be, uh, what do you call it, shaken off the tree. They're going to be shaken off the trees, just like the leaves shake off the trees that aren't strong enough to hold on to the branch. Uh, those people are going to sell. Uh, I think I did a video. I don't remember when it was. Within the last two weeks, 
I put up a video saying something like, if you're selling your gold, you're going to regret it or something like that. Well, that was probably back when gold was like 2100 or 2150 or something like that. I said something to the effect of that. Like, if you're selling your gold, you're going to regret it. You know, and people that sold their gold at 2000, 2100, they're probably regretting it right now a little bit, but they're not going to regret it as much as they will in the next years to come. Because they're going to tell themselves right now, well, it's only a couple of hundred dollars, you know, more than what I sold it for. So I'm, I'm, I feel pretty good about it. I didn't lose any money on it. You know, I'm up from what I purchased it for. So I feel pretty good about it. But then here in the next couple of years, they're going to be like, I wish I would have never sold it. Because the people that have already sold their gold, uh, they're, they're not going to buy again. If they sold it for like 2100 bucks, let's say, just to pick a number. They're not going to get back in it at $2,350 or $2,400. And that's not including the premium. I was looking at SD Bullion. And they got prices of like $2,500, $2,600 for one ounce of gold when, when you throw in the premium. So they're not going to get back in for four or $500 more than what they sold it for a couple of weeks ago. So more than likely, they won't get back in at all thinking that it's going to come back down, but not this time. You know, I could be wrong, ladies and gentlemen. Don't take anything that I say as financial advice because I could be wrong. I just don't believe that I'm wrong along with all of the other hundreds of other people on YouTube and social media that are a lot smarter than me that have the same sentiment on where gold and silver are going. Let's see. Marcia Bosteder or Bosteder, how are you doing? Uh Oh, let's take a look at this. I did hear about this. I went on a Goshen Prepper's site today, and he was talking about that. And Kim says, did you see that the country that starts with an I shot a, a ballistic missile at the other country that starts with an I that it doesn't like? It was shot down, but, uh, but Cobra Ball, Cobra Ball from Alaska and Skymaster that was retired flew out. All right, I didn't get that last part right there, but I do understand from what I understand. I'm not telling you that this is fact. From what I understand, there was a missile that was shot from one country to another and the uh and uh Israel defended itself by being able to shoot down the missile that was coming towards it and it was one of those bad nuclear missiles. Now that's just what I heard. I don't know if that's 100% fact, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, please let me know if you can confirm that. That's just what I heard today. Uh, let's see. Rudy, Could would you buy collector silver coins in 1928 piece dollars? 19 you know what? This is a great question, and I hear about it a lot whenever I talk about ITM trading. And let me tell you what I think. Uh, because it, what you're talking about, Country Humans Network, is numismatic coins, right? And I know that ITM trading works with numismatic coins, and they have a higher premium. Well, let me tell you, let me ask you a question first. And obviously, I'm not going to see your answer, but let me ask you a question. You know how really rich people, they take fiat currency, and to protect themselves against inflation, they buy like yachts, or they buy paintings, you know, like really expensive paintings? Why are they doing that? It's because they know that as inflation goes up, the price of these assets that they have, like the yachts or the paintings, let's concentrate on the paintings, that the price of those things are going to go up as well. So when I look at like a numismatic coin, right, a good way to think about it, when you look at a coin that's a numismatic coin that you pay more of a premium. Do I have one here? I know I have like a nice coin here. That oh here it is. I have a coin here that's like a proof, right? Yeah. So this coin right here, this is like a numismatic coin. I paid more for this. What I pay? I I paid like ten bucks more for this. Look at this. This is how old this coin is. This is how long I've had this coin. I paid thirty five bucks for it. All right. And you know that a, a nice silver eagle right now, even if it's brilliant uncirculated, that's not graded like this right now, would be about 35 bucks. All right. So that's how long I've had this. But this is considered a numismatic coin. 
So the premium that I paid on this, I paid on it because I really like the way this coin looks. So this is like art, all right? So I was willing to pay a really high premium on this coin because I like how it looks. So it's like I'm paying for the art of the way that this coin looks because it's so clean, it's so pretty, right? And, and uh, there's not that many of these coins as compared to your regular circulated coins. So when you look at numismatic coins, at those coins that are like peace dollars that are that are really old, that they're not making them anymore, those are like semi-numismatic. So yes, they have a higher premium. And what you're doing is, is that instead of investing in the actual metal, you're investing in the metal and in the art behind the metal. That's the way I see it when you purchase numismatic coins. And how I can justify you paying a higher premium for numismatic coins than you would for regular coins. Because what you're doing is you're purchasing art. That's what you're purchasing. You're purchasing art that also has metal in it that's a monetary metal. So that's really up to you. If you want to spend that extra premium in order to get a numismatic because you like the art behind that coin, it's really up to you. And, and in a way, you are taking a risk that in the future, people will not like the art so much that they will pay you the same premium you paid for it. Just like a piece of art that you hang on the wall. You buy it for $10,000 today, and in the future, you may want to sell it, but only be able to get $7,000 for it. Or you can buy it for $10,000 today. Inflation goes out of control, and in the future, you can sell it for $25,000. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's how I see numismatics when you compare it to how much you pay for them uh like also like buying a piece of artwork that's what it is to me man i hope that that makes sense the way i explained it but you know to answer your questions yes i would i would buy collector silver because i have and in my case it's paid off because like i said i've had this thing for a long time i paid 35 bucks for it right and what is it uh what's it rated i don't even know what it's rated it just says gem uncirculated. So I don't even know what it's rated, but it is NGC. And uh, as you can see that I already made the premium back off of this. I can sell this right now. If I took the coin out of it, I can sell it right now for probably more than what I paid for it without it being in a graded envelope like this. So let's see. All right. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, South River Prepping, what are my thoughts on copper? I think copper is going to skyrocket just like gold and silver. The only thing about copper is, is that I would not want to hold it, right? You know how we always say, if you don't hold it, you don't own it, stuff like that. Well, copper is just so dense, as not dense, it's the opposite of dense. It takes so much copper for you to build wealth with it. Where are you going to put that all? So you see right now the... the um. Uh, the ratio of silver to gold, I think it's like 82 or 84 ounces of silver uh, to buy one ounce of gold. Well, take a look at the ratio of copper to silver. I think right now copper is going for like $4 and change per pound, right? So it's going to take right now, what, seven pounds, roughly seven pounds of copper to equal one ounce of silver. Imagine how many pounds of copper is going to take to equal one ounce of gold as far as value goes. So copper, if you are a trader, if you like uh, dealing with the stock market, I would purchase some copper in the stock market uh, just to make some fiat currency that I can take out of it and buy gold or silver with it or preps. But I wouldn't be purchasing it uh, so that I can hold it, if that makes sense. Uh, any suggestions for a whole house generator? I do. I really like the Furman uh, big generator. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I think that I made a mistake when I bought that big Furman generator. Well, looking back now, I would say with hindsight, I made a mistake, right? But not really at that time. Because at the time that I purchased that uh, generator, that gasoline generator, uh, which can definitely power my entire house two times over. I didn't really have the knowledge or the comprehension of solar generators. And now that I know that I can power my house pretty much with a solar generator 
and then repower that solar generator with a small generator that doesn't use that much gasoline, I would rather do that than ever hook up my house to a big generator like the 8,500 watt Furman that I have. So if I were to do it again, I would just purchase a Furman. I, I like the Furman. That's why I say Furman because I've had experience with them and I like them. I think they make it. They make a very good generator. Instead of purchasing the really big one, the 8,500 watt one, I would purchase the, the one that's got an inverter in it that only pumps out like 3,600 watts. And the reason for that is, is that more than likely when you connect that to your house, it's going to be through a 30 amp or a 50 amp outlet. Okay. So if you buy an 8,000 watt, generator that puts out 8,000 continuous watts, you're never going to use all that wattage and you're going to be burning up all that gasoline for that extra wattage that is producing that you're not using, right? Because let's say you have a 50 amp wire going into your house, into your breaker. Well, 50 times 120, in order to get the watts, you, all you have to do is take the, the amperage and multiply it times the voltage. So 50 amps times 120 volts is 6,000 watts. So even if you have one of those 8,500 watt generators like I do, you're only going to be able to at any one time use only like 6,000 watts if you have a 50 amp, uh, you know, um, uh, umbilical cord, I call it, or power cord going into your house, going into your circuit breaker box. You're only going to use about 6,000 watts at any time right? Unless you're plugging in some extra electrical cords outside. So if I had to do it over again, I would still get a Furman, but I would get one of the smaller ones that puts out like 3,600 watts continuous and, and go with it that way. But ultimately, I would always say that you always get a gas generator first, but always back it up with a good solar generator system because a good solar generator system complements a gas generator and vice versa because you get to use the power that you need when you need it. Instead of just running a generator all the time, using all that gas, and at times you only need 100 watts, right? Uh, that experiment that I did with my gas generator and my solar generator, I think I averaged on a 60 hours or 59 hours. The, the experiment lasted 59 hours. I think I averaged like 119 watts per hour. So imagine having a generator running for your house, right? And uh, you're pumping out, let's say, 3,000 watts continuous. You're using all that gasoline to pump out 3,000 watts continuous, and you're only averaging 200 watts per hour. All of that wasted gasoline. When you could have just charged up your solar generator with what you needed it, turn off your gas generator, and then run off your solar generator, those things that you need to run your house, and then charge up your solar generator again right before it empties out. I think it makes a lot of sense to do it that way. And in the long run, not only do you save money and gas by doing it that way, but the gas that you have stored up will last a lot longer. Uh, let's see. Bob from accounting says, Oops only has really good sales for like three days. Uh, normally the weekends, he says, <laughs> I get paid on Friday. Well, I think this next sale period that they're going to have is going to be for like almost two weeks straight. I believe it's going to be a sale uh, uh, for Earth Day. All right. I think it's going to be almost two weeks. So you're going to have plenty of time to take a look at what they have. But I do believe they're going to have a flash sale, too, in the middle of that uh, time span. So I'm going to fill you all in on that stuff come either Sunday evening or Monday when I uh, put a video out about that because it's going to be a really good sale. Okay, let's see. <laughs> Linda, do not stop trying. Linda says that by now we should all know that she can't win anything. Don't stop trying. All right. I, I know that a lot of people get frustrated when I do like review videos and, and stuff like that. But ladies and gentlemen, first of all, when I do review videos, I think they're fun because I get to learn something new about something that I didn't know that much about. But it also shows you the consumer out there. If you were in the market for something like that, like let's say a little stove that I'm reviewing. You know, it shows you what it can and can't do. I tell you, I give you honest feedback on whether, yeah, I like this. I don't like this. I really like this. This is awesome. Right? It gives you some honest feedback. And every once in a while, I get to give something away. And in my opinion, it's a win-win. I mean, somebody's going to win it, right? 
And uh, so don't give up, Linda. Don't give up. All right. Okay, bring it down. Oh, man, look at how far behind I am. Goodness gracious. You see, that's what you get me for, for having me go on a rant about solar generators. Uh, let's see. Cutting tool edge designer, thank you very much. Many blessings to you and your family. Thank you so much. You're always over here supporting this channel. Thank you. And, yes, we'll pay it forward. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Oh, a solar independent. I did receive that book and I took a look at it, but you know what? I just don't have the time to go through everything. I keep waiting for the EMP or CME to happen, solar independent utility, so that I can actually have time to read everything that I've been sent over the years. I actually have a shelf back there. You can't see it from here, but it's, it's full of books that people have sent me, but I do appreciate it. Oh, you know what? Uh, uh, Rhonda Cossie says, thank you. I buy from, from uh, SD Bullion, but I heard I wanted to try Scottsdale. Uh, check this out. Scottsdale is nice. I mean, I don't buy from any online or anything like that. I promote them or I'm affiliated with them, but I don't buy from them because I have a coin shop. But uh, they actually had this. This was a couple months back. They had this little Scottsdale two-ouncer. They had two of them at the coin shop here a few months back, and these are really cool. Very good quality stuff. And these are called stackables. Because you can stack them on top of each other. See that? So, um, uh, yeah, very nice. But, yeah, these are Scottsdale's. They make really good product. You know, wh whatever whatever works for you, really. You know, whatever works for you, whoever makes you the happiest, you know, whoever gives you the best customer service. Like I said, competition, in my opinion, is very important. Uh, I, I'm actually partnering up with Jace Medical. I don't have their link or anything else in the bottom, but they've been asking me for years now. Can I affiliate with them? Well, I'm affiliated with Continuously Medical, and I really like Continuously Medical. They provide a good product at a at a very competitive price. The people behind the scenes are really good people. Theron over there, he's the CEO, COO, CFO. He's got all these hats he wears. He's a really good guy, and um, uh, and uh, they provide a good product. But Jace Medical has been asking me for months, and I've noticed that Jace Medical has different things that they offer than Continuously Medical does. So I was like, hey, I'm going to put them both in my description and let the best one win. You know, some may like this one better than the other. Some may like this one better than the other. But I think that competition is vital in order for the consumer to get the very best product at the best price, which right now it's very important. Okay, I'm going to bring it on down because it's really, I am so far behind. Oh, my goodness. Oh, let me see. I am sorry about that. Boomer in the burbs. Hi there. I purchased a generator that is worthless. Can I talk about the worthless generator I purchased that did not work for me? And hi, P. Hello to you. Yeah, I would like you to talk about it, even if it's something that I recommend because we need to talk about it. So, yeah, absolutely. Boomer in the burbs. Go ahead and put it down and have any questions that you may have uh, on that specific generator, and we'll talk about it. And that was about 20 minutes ago. So I'm going to bring it on down, all the way down. So I hope that I didn't miss anyone's questions. And if I did, just re-ask it. We'll go ahead and hang out here for about another 10 or 15 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Fiery Latina. <laughs> uh, question. I bought an 1800. I'm guessing that you bought an 1800 Opus, right? Uh, do I need solar panels too? Well, with any solar generator, you can always charge them off of your wall plug. So let's say, for example, that the only reason that you're getting a solar generator for is because you live maybe in an area where maybe you lose power a few times a year for a few hours, for six, seven, ten hours, you know? And that's pretty much the experience you've had, right? And you're buying the solar generator because let's say, for example, that you're only using it for like a refrigerator to keep your fridge running. Then necessarily you don't have to get solar panels right you can still do the job with that 
you know, if you're going off history. Do I recommend that you have solar panels? Yeah, I recommend that you have at least one really good set of solar panels, if not several, you know, more inexpensive ones that will still do the job, right? Uh, like, for example, I have I have several inexpensive solar panels that are 100 watts that I've had that I bought from Amazon years ago. They still do the job. They're just not that efficient. Uh, I have some really good Opus solar panels that are super efficient, but those things are very pricey, okay? So if I knew that I didn't think we were going to lose power for a very long time and uh, I didn't think I needed solar panels, I wouldn't get them. But I think that you should have solar panels. You don't need solar panels in order to charge your Opus 1800. You can charge it with your wall, with your wall outlet, your AC outlet. But I would recommend that you get solar panels. Now, a question a lot of people ask me is, I bought an Opus solar generator X, whichever one you bought, right? Do I need to buy Opus solar panels? You don't have to buy Opus solar panels. Uh, the solar gen the Opus solar generators, uh, most of them, or the Legacy series, they usually come with an 8 millimeter or an Anderson connector. And the new ones, the Mega series, come with pretty much Anderson connectors, right? You can use any solar panel you want. All you have to do is just get a splice that will go from your solar panel outlets, which are usually MC4s, uh, to an Anderson connector or an 8 millimeter if you have a legacy Opus, and that's it. So it doesn't have to be an Opus. Do I recommend them? They're very, very efficient. I think they're very good quality, but they are pricey. So in other words, no, you don't need to have solar panel, but I highly recommend that you get at least one good one. That way, if for some reason you do lose power for a very long time, you can at least use the sun to power them back up. Okay, let's see. Okay, oh, you see? Hey, crazy backyard chicken man, how you doing? You see, that's what I hate about taking so long to answer questions and getting through this is because now I didn't get... Uh, I did not get the answer that i wanted on like what so what generator uh she didn't say if it was a solar generator or a gasoline generator that was really bad which one was it uh, unless i missed it hey thank you Ma thank you michael thank you very much for that oh look at that so i even missed a few a few super chats let me go down here and make sure that i catch this uh daniel patrick thank you daniel Daniel says, FYI, Mike from Red Bar is streaming right now, showing leaked docs exposing you for being into feet and other sick stuff. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I've been exposed. I guess I'm into feet and other sick stuff. You know what? You, you know what's funny is that um, uh, it could very well be true that this is happening right now in some other channel with AI, with the way that AI works. I don't know what's going to happen to YouTube, you know, with the way that AI works, because right now there's plenty of content on my channel where if somebody wanted to mimic exactly the way I act and talk and say, ladies and gentlemen, 27 times in a video, they could literally go ahead and put a, what is it called? Fake something? They could put a fake me out there. I forget what it's called, fake something. But they can put a fake me out there with my voice and everything, and most people probably wouldn't be able to tell me apart. So that can that can be happening right now without us even knowing or without me even knowing. Uh, let me see. It's always the quiet ones. Go watch the video that I put out on how long will uh, the Mega 5 run my house. It's not that old because it's going to answer your question. It's going to show you the tool that you need in order to answer your question. Because let me read the question for those of you that are not watching. Uh, it's always the quiet one ask, what size solar generator do you recommend for a thousand square foot home? It has nothing to do with the size of your home. What it has to do with is what items within your home are critical appliances that you need to have running during a power outage and for how long, right? It's a little bit of a complicated question, but it's really not if you have the right tool. Now, if you go watch that video that I put out, I think it's probably about a week older now. You know, like how long will my Mega 5 run my house? Something like that. But you'll see me in the thumbnail and it says Mega 5, so you can't miss that. Okay? Um, uh, if you watch that, you're going to know what to look for in your home, what are essentials, you're going to know what tool to purchase. It's like a, it's like less than 20 bucks, actually. It's like 12, 13 bucks, a, a meter, a, a watt meter, 
that actually measures the watts that your appliances use. So you can hook it up to each one of your appliances for a day or so, and your appliance will still run, but it will record how many wattage, how many volts, all that kind of stuff that your, that your appliance use. And then you can do a little bit of math and determine, okay, I need a 2,000 watt hour solar generator in order to run my house essentials for 12 hours. Or I, or I only need a 1,000 watt hour. It depends on what it is that your essentials are and how much power they use. For example, if you were to look at my new refrigerator that we, we just did our kitchen, it's almost done, ladies and gentlemen, but my wife picked out this huge refrigerator, huge. It's 31 square feet. I mean, excuse me, 31 cubic feet. You could almost say square feet because you can live in it pretty much. It's so big, but it's about 31 cubic feet. It's a huge refrigerator. You would look at that and think that, man, you need a really big solar generator to run that thing for, for a full 24 hours. Nope. Incredible. That is such an efficient refrigerator slash freezer that in 24 hours, it only used 1.4 kilowatts of power, 1,400 watt hours, which means that with, with a Opus 2400, I can charge that. I can run that refrigerator for 24 hours straight and still have some wattage left over for like LED lights or a fan or something like that. Uh, so it just depends on your situation. I'm sure that some people may have appliances that are super, super efficient, like that refrigerator, which I'm just amazed at that, by the way. And some people may have appliances that are not efficient at all, that it may take a much bigger uh, generator or solar generator in order to power that. So I hope that answered your question because it's important that you actually do your own legwork and uh, don't compare what you have to someone else's, but actually know exactly what it is that you have and what it uses. That way you can use good math instead of assuming. And that part, if you watch that video, that part is, I think I say on the video that that's like $20 for that little tool. And it's not, I looked it up. It was like 12 or 13 bucks. So go watch that video. And I think I left the link for it too, so you can get to it. But it's very easy. It's very easy for you to determine how much wattage you need. I mean, think about the things in your home that are essential. Like, for example, let me tell you about the things in my home that are essential. And let's do it during the time of the year. That's the deadliest for us here in Alaska, right in the middle of winter. So right in the middle of winter, what do I need? Number one thing that I need if there's a power outage is for electricity to continue to go to my heater. I have a heater that runs on fuel oil, but the motherboard, the fuel pump, the fan, the uh, glow plug that is used to turn on uses electricity. It doesn't use a lot of electricity, but it still needs electricity. So I have a solar generator dedicated to that unit that's always on UPS, uninterrupted power supply. That way, in the middle of the night during the winter, if the power goes out on the grid, my Toyo stove, it continues to run with no problem. And the electricity that it uses is nominal. It's very, it's very small amount of electricity. So the 2,000 watt hour solar generator that I have hooked up to it, that thing will run my Toyo for probably close to a week with no problem whatsoever. So that's one thing that's critical for me. Another thing is my refrigerator. And, you know, everyone wants to make sure that their refrigerator keeps running during a power outage. You know, that way they don't have to bother with taking everything out, putting it in an independent cooler, et cetera. So that's another thing. So I know that my Toyo stove maxes out at about 450 watts. That's the surge, 450. My refrigerator, so awesome. The surge on my refrigerator is not even 300 watts. That's how efficient it is. So right now I'm up to 750 watts that I need for sure, right? Let's not talk about the freezers because the freezers in the worst of conditions in the, in the winter, I can actually take those baskets out and put them in the back or in the front deck. And they're going to stay frozen, no problem, right? And I don't have to actually power my freezers. But I've got lights. I can put on some lights, very minimal wattage there. I've got a water pump that maxes out at about 1,200 watts. That's the surge, but then runs at about 600 watts continuous for probably about a minute or so at a time whenever we need water. So I have to take that into consideration. You know, I have to take into consideration my heater that's under my house. So I take all these little things, I add them up together, and I ask myself, well, if this power outage is long enough, do I still have enough to maybe uh, run my water heater for 20 minutes or 30 minutes every other day 
so we can shower every other day or something like that, right? During a massive power outage. You take all of the things that you consider essential for you because they will more than likely be different than the things I consider essential. And you come up with a number. And then once you have that number, you can go to work trying to find out what is the best generator slash or solar generator for you, for your situation. Because it wouldn't be very fair for me to say, yep, go ahead and get a mega five. Get a mega, get a mega five and make sure you use my link, ladies and gentlemen. Right. It wouldn't be very fair for me to say that because I have no idea what you need to power in your house. And instead of getting a mega five, it may be that you can just get away with a twenty four hundred legacy model. That's at an awesome price. This sale coming up. Right. So why would you spend all that extra money when all you really need is this one over here? I want to make sure that if you're going to get something that I recommend that you get what you need, ladies and gentlemen, not just because I recommend it. Okay, bringing it down, bringing it down. Okay, let's see. Hey, Jennifer Cruz is in the house. How you doing? Good to see you. Oh, this is a good question. This is a little bit advanced, but I think I might be able to help you with the answer. Don't you have to match the amp and voltage limits for solar panels? Well, yes. For Well, I, if you're asking what I think you're asking, uh, for the Opus, I believe that they're 50, uh, 50 volts. I think it's 50 volts for, for the uh, BMS on the Opus. It might be 60. But ladies and gentlemen, I have so many numbers in my head with so many solar generators that sometimes they get mixed around a little bit. But let's go with 50 volts that your BMS is set up to um, uh, protect your system if you get anything over 50 volts. So if you're trying to put more than 50 volts in there at the same time with your solar panels, uh, it's going to trip. And it trips for a reason so that it can protect your system. And the way that you avoid putting too many voltage in through your solar panels is by connecting your solar panels in parallel instead of in series. And for this, I'll ask you to get on YouTube and type in, how do I connect solar panels in parallel? Or how do I connect solar panels in series? Right? When you connect them in parallel, your voltage stays the same. It will stay at 12 volts if you're dealing with 12 volt solar panels. If you connect them in series for every solar panel that you connect in series, your voltage is going to add up by 12. So let's say you connect two solar panels in series, you're going to have 24 volts going in. So that tells you that if you connect more than four solar panels in series, you're going to have more voltage going in than what your system can handle. And more than likely, it's going to trip or it's only going to like trickle charge your system, okay? I hope that makes sense because uh, I have had someone say before, hey, I purchased this uh, Opus solar generator, but there's something wrong with the input. You know, I connected my solar panels, blah, blah, and they said it, it barely has anything coming in. And it ended up being is, is that the gentleman connected them in series instead of in parallel. And once he corrected that, it worked just fine. Oh, yeah, I can. Just a second. <laughs> uh, look at you, who's your pioneer. I just happen to have one of these here. Let's go ahead and do a little lesson on uh, MC4 connectors and Anderson. Uh, who's your pioneer says, can you show us what an Anderson looks like? First, let me go ahead and show you what an Andr what a MC4 connector looks like. See? This here, this is your MC4 connectors. Where are they? Right here. Right? MC4. So if you have a solar panel, and your garden variety solar panels usually come with MC4 connectors, right? Uh, so if you have a garden variety solar panel, they're probably going to have these. So you go ahead and uh, you go ahead and grab one of these that has the input device that you need for your solar generator. Uh, on some of the legacy, uh, or on all of the legacy, ex yep, on all of them, the legacy Opus, uh, they have the eight millimeter, with the exception of the 2400, which has eight millimeter and Anderson connector. And this is what your Anderson connector looks like, okay? It's got a red and a black, and uh, you connect this into your, your solar generator after you connect these guys to your solar bat, so, solar panels, excuse me. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. And these are pretty cool because if for some reason 
let's say that you have a solar generator that has your Anderson connector configured where the red is on top of the black instead of next to the black. You can always pull this back. You can pull this sleeve back and be able to position these however you want. Okay, so these are pretty good quality. You can pick these up for like, I don't know, five bucks or six bucks on Amazon. And uh, this is 10 gauge too. So it's pretty good quality stuff here. Not a bad price. I picked up a few of these because you can never have too many of these, ladies and gentlemen. So here's your MC4 connectors for those of you that didn't know what it looked like. And here is your Anderson connector, your input connector. For those of you that may didn't know what it looked like either. Good question. I just happen to have a my little show and tell right here next to me. All right, let's bring it down some. Uh, Margarita Castaneda, thank you very much. A little blessing your way. We love. Ah, uh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, thank you, uh, Margarita. Uh, let's see. Let's bring it down some more. You know what, Republic uh, SR, thank you for your service. How many times do trash collectors or, you know, trash men uh, hear that? I'll tell you what, you know, let uh, the trash men not go to work for a week or two and people will notice. I guarantee you that. I remember there was a strike. I think it was in New York City here a few years back or not that long ago, really, uh, where the garbage was just a piling up. And plus, man, trash men make really good money. Uh, I think they do. SR, you guys make pretty good money, don't you? Like being a, a trash man, a garbage man, you make pretty good money. That's usually a union job that makes pretty good good money. So, heck yeah. Uh, let's see. Let me put this over here real quick. Oh, here we go. Look at JT is answering a question. Let's see. Uh, JT says, I have an Opus 2400. Man, JT's got them all. Awesome. All you're missing is the Mighty Mouse. You're missing this one right here, JT. <laughs> That's awesome. I've got an Opus 2400, 1800, 1200. The 2400 will handle everything except for the house AC. She's talking like a big house AC. All right. If you have like a little 5000 BTU one room AC, it will handle that. But uh, not a big house AC, definitely not. So yeah, the twenty four hundred, I like to call that thing the beast. Uh, it's a legacy, and what I mean by a legacy is is one of the first ones they came out with. Uh, but I think it's a great unit, and uh, this sale that they got coming up on Monday, it's going to be a great price. Uh, I get excited for these sales because, uh, like for example, the last one, uh, the twenty four hundred was like seven hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, if you use my code, that's an awesome price for those things. I mean, they still do everything they did a few years back when they first came out that they were 15, 1600 bucks. So you're getting them at a really great price. My goodness, David Hicks, you have a desktop that's a monster. Man, my entire setup right here, including the lighting. Right now, let me see how much is drawing. I can't show you, but I'll, I'll tell you right now. Right now, my lights, my my monitor, which is a very big monitor, I think it's 32 inches. Uh, I've got a huge CPU computer set up. My speaker, everything is pulling 145 watts, and you're and you're talking 800 watts. Holy smokes! It's like a room heater when it's cold. I can imagine. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, okay, bringing it down some. Oh, sweet. Yeah, Evita. That's awesome. Evita says, I am sending you Poppy's picture and I will be there next Friday. Please remember to say hello to Poppy for his 80th birthday. Yes, send me the picture, send me a text, send me an email, all that stuff to make sure that I don't forget. 
All right. And please make sure you're here. Like you say, you will to remind me. That is going to be a lot of fun. All right. That's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Uh, you know, I really have a lot of fun doing this kind of stuff. And I appreciate it when when some of you all allow me to, like, you know, be part of your family doing things like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Fat Man Prepper, what's happening, brother? Uh, did you ever test to see if your freeze dryer could be powered by a complete solar? Uh, curious as my freeze dryer is being delivered Monday. I never did. I never did. I got the use out of my freeze dryer that I needed to get. For the time that I did, and then I I paid it forward to someone that I know that doesn't have a freeze dryer, right? And uh, they're getting their use out of it as well. And I asked them, all that I asked them to do was, is once they're done with it, pay it forward to someone that they know that need it. Uh, so, but I never did, so I can't answer to that. Uh, let's see. EcoFlow makes a really good solar generator. I've reviewed a few of them, but they've fallen and fallen in the same category as most other solar generators, whereas they will not ship up here to Alaska. All right. So I think that they're a good quality. Uh, if they've all switched over to LiPo 4 batteries, and that's a good thing, because I know that one of my pet peeves with them in the past was that they still had solar generators that they were actively selling on their website that just had lithium ion batteries, which are far, uh, which are not superior to the uh, LiPo 4. I mean, not as good as LiPo 4. So other than that, they're pretty good. I've had a couple of them where I've had a little mishap where uh, we need a warranty work done, but they got the warranty work done, and I never hold that against the company uh, for one or two times something happening here or there because these things happen. Uh, what I hold on them is how do they take care of it if there is a problem, and they did take care of it. All right, so, yeah, I can't really say anything bad about an EcoFlow solar generator. Uh, I think that. When you say, how do I compare to Opus? This is what I say about Opus because I believe it's the truth. Opus is the best bang for your buck, in my opinion. Not only are you getting a solar generator that is a good solar generator that will last a long time, but it does exactly what they tell you it's going to do. If they tell you that the Mega 5 is going to give you 4,000 watts of continuous output, guess what? You're going to have 4,000 watts of continuous output. Right? If they tell you it's going to give you a 7,000 watt surge, it's going to give you a 7,000 watt surge. If they tell you it's got 5,040 watt hours, it's because it has that. All right. It, and it, at the minimum, it probably has more than that, and they're underrating it. So that you're getting more than what they're telling you that you're getting. I think that they charge a great price for it. I believe this upcoming sale, the um, uh, I think they're selling the the uh, 2400. The Opus 2400 for like, I think it comes out to like 34 cents or 32 cents a watt hour, which is incredible. I remember when solar first came out, solar generators first came out. You're lucky if you got $1.50, $2 per watt hour. Now you're looking at 34 cents, 32 cents a watt hour. So I really like the Opus uh, because it's not fancy, right? The Opus doesn't have the touch screen or anything like that. It has buttons. I like buttons, right? I like simple. And, uh, the one thing that I can say about Opus is that it's always worked anytime I've ever needed it. I, I don't just review these guys. You know, they're not just there to look pretty, right? I use these things, right? And the reason these guys are there almost all the time is because I have so many darn solar generators that I have enough to use for what I need it for here or there, right? But I keep these guys because I promote them, right? Because uh, I think they're a good product at a very good price. And the people behind it, ladies and gentlemen, is a big deal. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Opus has a program called Opus Help. And if someone needs a solar generator, because let's say, for example, they have an oxygen machine and they need a solar generator as a backup for electricity in case they lose electricity, all you have to do is apply through the Opus Help Fund and they save 5% of all of their proceeds to go towards giving people that need a solar generator for some kind of a medical condition, but that they can't afford it, they give it to them. They ship it to them for free. And there's been several people from the Alaska Prepper community that have received free solar generators from Opus. So I promote them because I believe in their product. I like their product. I think that there's a good team behind the product and that they actually care about the people, the community that makes them successful. They don't just forget about them. So I'm always going to promote Opus unless something happens where I'm like, hey, I didn't know about this. 
this is messed up. I'll never deal with this again. But I don't see that happening in the future. Okay. Every time that I'm going to go ahead and go away, I uh, I see another question. Uh, you know, that is a, it, that's a good question. I have no idea, and I didn't want to pry. I love Ms. Zhang. And by the way, I will be having Ms. Zhang on this channel here in the near future. Probably in the next two or three weeks, I'll be having her on here. I invited her to come on because I really enjoy talking with her, and she is so smart. But I don't know. I have no idea why uh, Ms. Zhang and ITM Trading parted ways. I have no idea. But in all honesty, I really don't care. I really don't care. I still think ITM Trading is a great place. And I still like Ms. Zhang. By the way, uh, she has a new YouTube channel. And her YouTube channel's name is Lynette Zhang. So go check it out. When I have her on, I'll have all her information and everything. Uh, but um, uh, it's not going to be a live stream. It's going to be pre-recorded. But I don't know why. I really don't know. These are some things that I just don't concern myself with. Uh, but uh, good question, by the way. Man, this is a great question. You know, what I think is a good ratio is like 100 to 1. So if you don't have 100 ounces of silver, you shouldn't have an ounce of gold. That's what I think. But that's just me thinking out loud. There's there's no mathematical, you know, formula that I derive that number from or anything like that. I just think that that if you have 100 ounces of silver, then you should go ahead and get an ounce of gold. And I guess one of the reasons is is because gold is so dense in value. I mean, let's say that you have enough fiat currency to get 10 ounces of gold, right? Well, that would be roughly 800 ounces of silver. 10 ounces of gold, silver to gold ratio of around 80, 85, let's just say 80. That's 800 ounces of silver. If you had to take off in a really big hurry, can you get all of your silver packed up in a hurry and take off, right? But can you get all of your gold packed up if it's the same value and get off easier? You know what I mean? So it's a lot easier to, to bug out if you have to bug out, to cross a border if you have to cross a border with gold than it is with silver. Where's the where's the value as far as a return on what you put away? I think the value is going to be in silver. I think that silver will greatly outperform gold on a percentage basis. Uh, so, But it depends on your situation. If you want to be mobile, then you're going to probably get more gold than silver. If you're going to be static and stay in one place, you're probably going to get more silver than gold because you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, getting it and bugging out with it. Okay, let's see. Man, how, man, we're already an hour and a half. Lori says, hello, sorry I'm late. Well, Lori, guess what? We are just about going to be shutting down here. <laughs> hey, what's up, Mario? Mario says, love the Black Panther shirt. I've had this shirt for a little bit now. Uh, man, I really like the Black Panther movie, too. Uh, remember that gentleman that played in it? Uh, he passed away from cancer not that long after making that movie. I was like, man, that stinks. Okay, well, yes, I have to... Uh, <laughs> Uh, yes, Joy, Joey Nye, how you doing? Says, don't leave, Rudy. T talk about the facts of the press. Yeah, the, the, we are, or we, the Great Depression has already started. I mean, I think people would agree with that. All you have to do is just take a look. You know, back during the Great Depression, if you read the books, if you look at the pictures, you would always see long lines of like men going to soup kitchens to eat. Right. So you would see long lines of people getting food. And ladies and gentlemen, the exact same conditions exist today. I, I actually think it's worse. The thing is, is that those long lines of people getting food because they need food, they need help. The reason we don't see them is because it's, today it's electronic. Today it's called an, uh, what is it, EBT card or a SNAP card? I'm not sure what they're called, but like a food welfare, like welfare. That's where the lines are. People just can't see them. So they don't really think about it. But when when more than 50% of Americans don't have 400 bucks 
and can actually lose everything due to a flat tire because they can't fix it or can't pay to fix it. And then they can't work and then they can't pay their bills. And then they're out on the street. You know how everything snowballs. Tell me that we're, we're, we're good. We're as good as they tell us that we are, you know, on your pundits, on your mainstream media pundit channels in the government. Oh, our economy is the best that it's been forever. I created 12 million jobs, et cetera, et cetera. Don't tell me that things are that good when your average American can't save four or 500 bucks in the bank where they can't afford a flat tire. When 60 to 70% of Americans, right, the richest country in the world, right, when they live paycheck to paycheck, don't tell me that thing that something's not wrong. When 40% of Americans that earn six figures or more live paycheck to paycheck, you can't tell me that something's not wrong. All right, ladies and gentlemen. When, if you saw the video I put this morning, if you see that the price of olive oil that I've been talking about for years at Costco has gone up almost 300, no, more than 300% in just the last couple of years, you can't tell me that there's something not wrong. Obviously, there is definitely something wrong. And people are waking up to it. The problem is it's too late. The system by which we are governed monetarily and governed via governance, those systems, ladies and gentlemen, they're either too corrupt, not enough morals, and they're just broken. And they're no longer going to work for the American people. They still work a little bit for the people that run the system, but they don't work for the American people anymore. The monetary system, the financial system, it doesn't work for us anymore. All it can do henceforth is strip us of our wealth unless we are that 1% that instead of relying on a paycheck, rely on assets, rely on capital gains, right? Uh, look at this. R. Heath is in the house. How you doing, R. Heath? It's good to see you. Let's see. I believe that Ms. Sang wasted to promote community wanted to promote community where itm wanted her to focus on metals only it could be it could be but i'll tell you what her new channel is oh thank you very much r heath by the way i'll tell you what her new channel is really good her new channel she's really talking about metals the final i can't wait until she comes on because she's going to come on this channel and it's always a pleasure having her on it really is she's so she's so smart and we're very lucky to have her in our community and she is by far one of the biggest truth tellers on social media, I think. All right, that is it. I'm not going to look at any more of the comments because I'm not going to get caught with another question. <laughs> All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. As always, thank you so much for joining in. All right, I always enjoy doing these live streams. Remember that on Monday we have a live stream again here where I go over the apocalypse, right, with gray man prepping. And that's always fun. And if you come on here on Monday and join our live with gray man pe prepping, is at 3 p.m. Alaska time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Stop telling me that I talk too much and that I don't let gray man talk, okay? <laughs> Anyways, we'll be here on Monday. Hope to see you then. I'll probably have a video out on Sunday. Uh, yes, we will. It's going to be our news compilation videos that we do on Sundays and Wednesdays. So I'll definitely have a video out on Sunday unless something crazy happens that's out of my control. Other than that, let me go ahead and tell you really quick, be safe. Don't do something that's crazy that's going to cost you or someone else's life. Don't drink and drive. Don't drive and drink. If you're going to drink, have a great time. Get a designated driver. Call an Uber or a cab, ladies and gentlemen, because we want to see you again on Monday during our live. Other than that, have a great rest of your Friday. Have a great weekend ahead. God bless every one of you. God bless America. I'm Alaska Prepper, and I'm out. And this is the time that's kind of odd because I have to look for our outro. During our outro, we always ask that if you are new to the community, say, I am new, so that we can shout you out and everyone can welcome you. All right, God bless you.
Thank mm-hmm. you.